Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and I figure a lot of you are probably getting sick of Unity coverage. If Unity isn't your engine of choice, thanks to that recent humble bundle and some Unity news, and probably the Unity IPO tomorrow, Unity is kind of dominating the headlines. So today, I figured I would do something about the Godot game engine. Specifically, we are going to be looking at an add-on for it called VPainter. Painter is a cool application. This enables you to paint vertex colors directly inside of the Godot game engine. It's actually kind of like Substance Painter Lite. Nothing to the level of Substance Painter, but Substance Painter is a full-blown commercial project. This one is an MIT open source project by one guy, but it is an impressive thing, and we're going to see that nonetheless. Also, on the topic of the Godot game engine, yes, there was a new release. I mentioned it in a community post. It's up here on the GodotEngine.org website. It's a new maintenance release. Not really much to mention on it, to be honest. It's not enough to make a video out of it, but hey, it's a new update. Maintenance release, so it's basically just bug fixes and that kind of stuff, but do be aware, new version of Godot out there. All right, without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at VPaint. Now, this here is a, um, it's, it's an add-on for the Godot engine. Basically, just drop it in the add-ons folder from the GitHub archive, and then go into your project settings, add it over into the plugins folder, and enable it. Of course, you want to extract it into the uh, the add-ons folder before you open up your project or it won't show up. But once it's there, it is ready to go. And now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and use this add-on. Now, unfortunately, you can't use the geometry that comes in uh, Godot. So you can't build your own capsule or um, you know, plane or, or cube or anything like that. You have to bring in your own mesh. So what I've done is I've brought in a GLB file. I made a blender of a sphere and a cube or a box. And then what I've done is on importing those guys right here, just basically import them as separate objects, and that will generate the required mesh file that we need here. All right, so I created a new 3D scene. You can see it right here. And in that 3D scene, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a mesh instance like so. All right, so we now have a mesh instance here and we want to bring in our mesh. So let's start off with, actually, we're just gonna use the sphere. So let's bring the sphere mesh over and drop that. Oh, sorry here, let's go ahead and load. I don't know why I lost drag and drop for sphere, but cube works, I don't get it. Anyways, there we go. There is our uh, sphere mesh. And now what we wanna do is apply a material to this guy. Right here, we're gonna be creating a new shader material, but we're gonna do it this way. So we're gonna create a new resource down here and we wanna create it of type material shader material that guy right there create one of those and we will call it my material world all right there we go so we've got a new material to work from well, we're going to go ahead and open up that resource so there it is right here and we are going to apply a shader to it now this actually comes with this if you want your add-ons folder right here you will find v painter and inside of that there is an additional resources and you've got a pair of shaders we're actually going to work with both of those in this example but let's start off with the shader vertex color shader just drop that guy in right there and now we can actually start painting this guy really straightforward we could come in here first thing you want to do is go into the shader params and turn on the r G and B channel. So we got red, green, and blue. Now we can draw with. Select this guy in mesh instance. Assuming that you are uh, installed right, you will now see V Painter as an option. Click that, and we are now in V Painter. So you see here, you got various different things here. You've got the brush tool, the sample tool, the I don't know what this is because it's disabled tool, and the fill tools. And then you got two different colors available. Whichever one you selected last is going to be the color of choice. So let's go here. We'll pick a lovely, lovely green. We will go to the fill tool and we will fail. All right, green, green, fill, 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 <laughs> fill. Okay, I can't just keep staying fill over and over again. What I actually have to do is fix my mistake. What I need to do is apply my material to the object. And there we go. We filled it over and over and over again with green. Uh, so we can sit here and switch over to red. And now we're in mix mode, right? So that's why we're getting a little bit of both. You've got the option of add, subtract, multiply, divide, or mix. So we're just adding very, very red. So come here to the green, whichever the last color you're going, we're going with green. So now we can go here, we can switch into uh, drawing mode. Let's go here, pick a new color. So let's just do some blue on here. And there, there you go. So you can literally paint directly inside of Godot on the vertices of your image. Some pretty cool stuff. Again, make sure that you actually apply your material. Uh, that, that tends to help, un unfortunately enough. So that is the one thing we can do here. And that is really kind of cool. But let's go ahead and create another material. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to, again, create a shader material like so. 
and we'll call this my other material, of course. And what we're going to do with this one, so let's go here and we're gonna edit it. This one has a shader as well, but this time we're going to use the other shader. That's this guy right here. Now, what I've done in the past is I've applied a number of um, textures. I've, I've imported a number of textures in here. Uh, they're textures, so obviously I called them Murphy, and they are here. They got masks, which is full white, full black, and then we have ground, ice, moss, and rock textures to work from. Now that we've got this material in here with the height blend four shader applied to it, I'm going to just come on back to my mesh like so, and we are going to uh, swap out that material. So go here to that material right there. We're going to load it, and we're going to instead pick my other material. All right, so here we are. Instead of doing the direct to the vertices painting this time, we're going to be doing some texture blending and this is some cool stuff so here we go and where did my material go so my other material let's open that guy up and you're going to see here instead of having the um, rgb channel stuff here we've got a set of uh letters m1 c1 n1 m2 c2 n2 and so on m is the mask c is the color channel and n is the normal channel and as you will see i have so we can do full on. We'll just drop straight white masks in for all of the white channels. Uh, this actually doesn't make any sense for a reason I'll explain in a second, but I don't really need masks in most cases anyway. So just drop that in. What this is actually going to do is mask out for this channel. I'll explain that in a second. Let me just get everything set up. So the first one, we're going to do a ground texture. So wrap that in there. Boom. So now we have a ground texture in, and we're going to drop the normal map in as well, like so. And now we're going to repeat for the second one. So that is ice. We'll drop a color channel in for number two. So there, and then a normal map in as well. These textures all came from CC textures, uh, CC zero textures, by the way, if you want to grab some yourself. So now we got moss. So moss, let's drop in a color channel here. And we will drop in a normal map as well. And then finally, our fourth channel, we've got rocks. So let's drop in a color channel. And then finally a normal channel. All right, there we go. So if we want to see the normal, I'd have to add a light to the scene. I'm, I'm not going to bother on that one. Uh, for some reason, it had to reimport that one. All right, so we have a thing. Actually, it looks remarkably like a tennis ball now. But what we can do is go back into Painter, and this is where those masks come in. For each one of these, there is a channel attached. So for if you paint with black, black to white, is this one, mask one. Uh, red, green, and blue channels, I believe, for the rest of them. So what I could do now is come in here, we go to black, and I can just basically start painting. And there you see the black channel. This one right here, those two are taking over. So now I could even just do it as a straight out paint. So boom, we have 100% of the first channel painted it. So now I'm gonna switch here to the red here. And one of these, I forget which one, is now controlled by the red channel. So let's pick that in there. Oops, I was still in fill. Didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's go here. We'll do some black painting on top. So there we can mix the two together. So now we've got a little bit of our first channel being painted on top of the, our entirely red channel. And then we can kind of keep doing that. So let's go in here to the blue channel. And there we go. We've got, again, another one of these coming in. And then finally, we should have the green channel. And I got to admit, one of these doesn't work very well for me. I think it's green. Yeah, so I never get my moss. I don't know why channel three never works for me. It's supposed to on that theory, but the way I'm experiencing with this guy, I can only get two of the, sorry, three of the four to work. So I can get uh, white, red, and blue to work. So again, we got white and black. Oh, white. All right, so if I got to paint, I got to paint white, and then I got some of my moss. So I do white, and then I do green on top. Yeah, there we go. So I've got to do, ah, so if I come in here, I start off, complete white instead of complete black. We go to whatever our default is there. And then I come in with my green channel. We get our, ah, gotta stop doing flood fill. All right, let's, let's do that one more time. So vertex paint, white, like so, flood fill. We've got nothing going on. Boom, all right. So then my green channel works just fine. Come in here. I'll remember to turn on the paintbrush this time. And as you can see, we've got some controls over it. We can make that brush big or small. So if I want to do a little bit of precision, I can do so right there. We can also change the hardness of our brush. Like so, the opacity of our brush. So if you want to just sort of little bit at a time, you can do so. And then again, we can switch out to, again, the red channel. And we can do the same thing. We start blending them all together. And then we could go to the, once again, blue channel. And let's turn the opacity back up because that's hard to see. 
and our blue channel is in. There you go. So that is it. That is the tool. Uh, again, you got a number of different channels to work with here, and you got a number of different modes. So again, you can subtract, uh, or you can add in. Let's go back to a paintbrush for that, like so. And they all kind of work together. And then you got control over how they all interact. If you go back over to your actual material over here, uh, you've got these blend softness applicators available right here. And you can see how the blending will work between the various different channels. And that one there as well. I don't think that's going to do anything in this particular case. But and yeah, that is the idea. In some ways, this is really substance painter light for Godot. It's a really cool add on. Uh, it hasn't been updated in a number of months, unfortunately, but it, it's the basis is all there. It is completely open source. If you do want to check it out, once again, it is available up on GitHub. It is under the MIT license, so you could do with it as you wish. And on top of that, it's all uh, GD script. So if you want to extend it, use this as a starting point for yourself, you can. Again, under the additional resources, those are the two shaders that we worked with. To grab this guy, literally just clone this repository, grab this add-ons folder right here, drop that into your project. So if we come here, we'll look at the end result. So let's start at all right, C, temp of course, uh, vpaint right here. And here you can see add-ons, make sure it's in your add-ons folder. Make sure it's in vPainter and we head on back over here and we can go ahead into our projects, project settings, plugins. It will show up right there. Just click and make sure it's enabled. And then with a mesh object selected, like so, you should see vPainter available. Again, one of the gotchas here is you can't use built-in geometry. So if you're using your own uh, spatial mesh, so um, mesh material, for example, Mesh instance, come on, mesh instance, there we go. You can't use any of these guys, none of them, but you can use your own imported ones, such as a cube or sphere. And interestingly enough, if someone can tell me why I can do this, see, no error, but I can't do this, Please let me know because I'm really confused. But anyways, that is it. That is a add-on for uh, Godot game engine called vPainter. It works for Godot 3.2, completely free, MIT license. Pretty powerful stuff, actually. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.